Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. In our last presentation, we looked at the decisions of an individual firm and how they differed in the short run and in the long run. In this presentation, we're going to go from the supply curve for an individual firm in the short run and in the long run up to market level supply in the short run and in the long run. Remember, the difference at the market is not only do fixed costs become variable in the long run, that's what happens at an individual firm level, and so that also happens at the market level, but also at the market level, the number of firms can change in the long run. Firms can enter and exit. We're going to start with the simplest case where we're going to assume that there's a large number, an arbitrarily large number, of identical businesses. Let's start off at the individual firm level. So we've got little q, individual firm output on the horizontal axis, and dollars on the vertical axis. And let's draw on our marginal cost curve, which can be that one, our average total cost curve, which... That looks pretty good. And our average variable cost. And yeah, that doesn't look too bad either. So let's just label them. So we've got uh, marginal cost up here. We've got average total cost, which is the red one. And average variable cost, which is the blue one. And we're going to start off from the short run. Now remember that in the short run, the critical price is going to be the minimum of average variable cost. So let's pop that on here. Let's put that on our diagram. So this price here, that price is just going to be the minimum of average variable cost. Okay, now why is that critical? Well remember that in the short run, a firm will not produce, it will shut down if the price that it faces is less than minimum average variable cost. But if the price it faces is above minimum average variable cost, then it will produce where price, which is marginal revenue, is equal to marginal cost. So, we can draw the individual supply curve for a firm in the short run as being, well, the supply is going to be zero if the price is less than minimum average variable cost. If the price is above minimum average variable cost, then the supply curve is just going to be given by the marginal cost curve. So the supply curve is just going to follow that marginal cost curve. So the purple line here just represents the supply curve for the individual firm. Let's just label it. So that's the firm's short run supply curve. It tells us for any given price how many units the firm would like to supply in the short run. One other thing to note, the supply curve is discontinuous. It's zero until price hits minimum average variable cost, then it jumps to a positive level when price goes above minimum average variable cost. Now, how do we go from there to the market? Well, let's try and make this slide a bit smaller. I'm going to pop it down here. So we can, we can still see it, but it's going to be a bit tiny down there. I'm, I'm going to blow this one up if I can. Here we go. This is going to be our market level. So we're going to look here at market supply. It's going to be in the short run, and in the short run we have a fixed number of firms, and that, that's just going to be n firms. n is just a number. It could be 10, it could be 50, it could be 100, whatever number of firms. Okay, now we want to try and get the market supply curve. Well, remember the market supply curve is just going to be the individual firm supply curves. As all our firms are identical, it's just going to be n of those individual supply curves added up horizontally. So why don't we mark on here minimum average variable cost. So that point there is just again minimum average variable cost. It's the same for every firm which makes life easy. And our supply curve at the firm level, well it's just going to look like, well it's going to be zero until we get to minimum average variable cost. Why? Well, because every firm 
produces zero until price reaches minimum average variable cost. So if all firms are producing zero, the market's producing zero. Then once we hit minimum average variable cost, it's going to jump across to the right, and then it's going to follow up n lots of individual firm supply curves. So it's going to be flatter than any individual firm supply curve, any individual firm's marginal cost curve, so that's going to be flatter or more uh, elastic because you've got the n firms adding up. So this line here is simply going to be our market supply and it's a short run market supply. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Let's now look at the long run. So we'll start again at the firm level and looking at the long run. Let's draw on our marginal cost curve again. That'll do. Our average total cost curve. Um, that looks pretty good. And our average variable cost curve. And that looks not too bad anyway. Okay, and let's just label them. So we've got marginal cost. Ooh, that's a dreadful M. Average total cost and average variable cost. Okay, and remember that in the long run, the critical price that we're interested in at the firm level is the minimum of average total cost. That in the long run, if price is less than minimum average total cost, the firm will exit the market. And if a price is above minimum average total cost in the long run, then it will be making profits in the long run, positive economic profits. So let's mark that on here and label this point minimum average total cost. And we've sort of already answered what the long run supply at the firm is going to be. If a price the firm faces is less than minimum average total cost, it exits the market, it produces nothing. If the price is above minimum average total cost, it will produce where price, which is marginal revenue, intersects marginal cost. So we can put our supply curve on here. And our long run supply curve, well, it's simply going to be zero at any price that's less than minimum average total cost. And then it's going to jump across to the marginal cost curve. And for any price above minimum average total cost, it's going to follow the marginal cost curve up. So, again, we have the situation where the green curve here is simply the long run supply curve for the firm at the firm level. For any price, it tells us how much the firm would like to supply. Now, let's make that smaller, I'll pop it down here, and we've got two little hidden ones over here. Oh, let me blow it up. We're going to get to the market supply curve, but we're going to do it in two steps. The first step, we're going to hold the number of firms constant. So we're going to look at market supply when we have N firms. And then we're going to allow for new firms to enter the market. So, what do we know about the long-run supply curve at the market level with a fixed number of firms? Well, it's pretty easy. If you've got N firms, and here's the individual firm supply curve, then just like before, the market supply curve is just N of those individual supply curves added up horizontally. So let's mark on our critical price here, minimum average total cost. And we can very easily put on our market supply curve. The market supply curve is simply going to be zero at any price below minimum average total cost. We know that because, hey, n lots of zero is still zero. It's then going to jump across to the equivalent of n times this point here, this quantity, but n firms worth of it. And then it's going to track up the n marginal cost curves. And as before, it's going to be flatter, or more elastic than the individual firm's supply curve. So this line that we've got here, this green line, is simply going to be the market supply curve in the long run, but holding 
the number of firms fixed at n firms. But we know that in the long run, the number of firms is variable. So let me grab this one and I'm going to pop it back over here. I'm going to hide it back over here because it's actually not going to be very useful. What we really care about is the curve that we're going to have here, market supply in the long run after entry and exit. So we've got to ask the question, how are the number of firms going to change in the long run? Well, again, the critical point is going to be given by the minimum of average total cost. Remember, that's the same for every firm because all our firms are identical in this example. That, that makes life a lot easier. But let's come back for a moment, back to thinking about our individual firm. So, again, I'll just blow this down a little bit, blow this up, and let's have a think about what's happening at the individual firm level. Notice that at the individual firm level, Firms make zero profits, they produce nothing, if price is below minimum average total cost. In fact, if they operated, they'd make negative profits, so they exit the market. So we know that if price is below minimum average total cost, market supply will still be nothing. All the firms will exit the market. But what if price is above minimum average total cost? Well, in that situation, our individual firm has price, which is average revenue, above average total cost. And that means that the firm is going to be making economic profits. And if a firm's making economic profits, then someone outside is going to say, hey, I want a bit of that too. Other firms are going to want to come into this market and get their share of that economic profit. And of course, because we've got a large number, an arbitrary large number of identical firms, there's always someone out there who would want to come in. And as long as positive profits can be earned in this industry, as long as people can enter this industry and do better than their next best alternative, and that's the definition of economic profits, as long as firms can make positive economic profits, they'll keep pouring into this industry. And they're only going to stop pouring in when the price comes back to minimum average total cost. So in our simple example here, our market supply curve is actually really, really simple. If the price was below minimum average total cost, output would be zero, there'd be exit. Conversely, if the price was up here above above minimum average total cost, well, firms would keep coming in as long as the price stayed up there. So, well, supply would be somewhere out there. I mean, God knows where. It'd be out at infinity if literally the price kept on staying above minimum average total cost. New firms would just keep coming in to get some profit. So we know that the market supply curve must literally jump across to infinity at that point. It becomes a horizontal line. Any price above minimum average total cost, you get entry. Any price below minimum average total cost, and you get exit in the long run, and zero production. So our long run supply curve at the market level, when we have an arbitrary large number of identical price-taking firms, is a horizontal line at minimum average total cost. Now, We've made some pretty strong assumptions in there. We've assumed that there's an arbitrary large number of identical businesses. In the real world, businesses aren't absolutely identical. But this special case still gives us some really good insight. Why? Well, let me now put our short run market supply per curve back on here. And I might make that black. And remember, we needed a critical value. We needed the minimum average variable cost there. And remember that the short run supply curve, well, it went up vertical axis, it was zero, until it hit minimum average variable cost, then it jumped across, and then it sloped up. So here we've got both our short run and now a short run market supply and our long run 
market supply on the same diagram. Notice that in the long run, the market supply curve is much more elastic than it is in the short run. And the reason for that is driven by this entry and exit. It's the entry and exit of new firms that mean that the market supply curve in the long run can respond much more to a price change than it can in the short run. Now, if firms differ, our long-run market supply curve won't be literally horizontal. And so most of the time when economists analyse market behaviour in a perfectly competitive market, they will have an upward-sloping long-run supply curve but it will always be more elastic than the short-run market supply curve. And that extra elasticity, that extra change in quantity for a given change in price is given by entry and exit. That'll do for now. Next presentation, we're going to apply this to the Australian mining boom. Talk to you then.